Life or death encounters happen in split seconds and you need to be ready to protect yourself. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of New York City. Here we're going to see a couple of New York's finest who have the unenviable task of dealing with a suicidal man. We're going to learn important lessons here about verbal judo, about de-escalating conflict, using verbal commands appropriately, and when it's time to stop talking and start shooting. The news story says that the officers here that we're going to see have been called to this apartment complex for a man who is suicidal. They have been through crisis response training. The one officer there does have a taser on him. But let's listen in on the body camera and then we'll come back and learn some lessons once this altercation is over. How you doing? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. down. Happened just that fast, friends. These officers here are coming on scene knowing that they have a problem, knowing that they have somebody who's suicidal. But usually somebody who's a danger to themselves is not a danger to others. It's actually rare that somebody who is a danger to themselves will flip around like this and be a danger to others. So these officers trying to come in here kind of soft. Again, you know, cops, why are we expecting them to be social workers and come into these kind of situations? But when they get called, they have to respond. So they come in here and they see this guy's got knives on him. And I want to pay attention that as he comes and says, hey man, put it down, the guy starts coming at him. And look and see how much the officers had to move. You know, when we talk about the Tuller principle or the 21 foot rule and they say, oh, you know, that's how far somebody can go, that's true. But the rule only applies to somebody who's stationary and this officer moved. He backed up at least 10, 10 feet or so from where he was originally starting, had the time to get his gun out. And you notice that he's looking at him over the top of that. He's not pointing a gun at him yet. He's telling him, put it down, put it down, put it down. Now, <clears throat> when the guy doesn't do it three times, here we finally see the officer get the gun up. And I'm not sure if he decided to shoot him in the leg here. I kind of doubt it. Kind of guessing that those New York recoil spur, the New York trigger spring rather, is what pushed him down here. But he took a shot because the guy continued to come at him, continued to advance aggressively on him with two knives in his hand. And there's no way that he could have used uh, the taser or his partner couldn't have gotten invested because he was back behind him, couldn't have gotten in there. Finally, we see the officer here shoots, and as soon as the threat stops, he stops. And that was an excellent job, that you shoot until the threat stops all the time. The guy went down. He couldn't advance on him with the knives anymore, so he wasn't a threat anymore. So therefore, the officer stopped. If you go read the news story, the officers then administered first aid to this guy and kept him safe until the paramedics arrived and got him to the hospital and got him the help that he needed, which is why we always say keep your first aid skills strong as well. All in all, difficult spot for these officers to be in. They handled themselves well, moved effectively, used a firearm when they needed to, had the first aid skills available to save the guy's life too, and they covered their ASP.